This is One on One. Welcome to One on One. I'm Steve Adubato. It's my honor and my pleasure to introduce uh, Dr. Randy Huron, who is Chief of Developmental and Behavioral Pediatrics at Hackensack University Medical Center. Good to see you, Doctor. Thank you. Same here. Um, we're here to talk about autism. That's right. What is it, first of all? Autism is a neurodevelopmental disorder, and it uh, affects children's uh, social communication, um, the way they interact with people, um, and also their interests. Um, and sometimes they get stuck on certain things. Um, they um, engage in repetitive behaviors. Why do you think that, for many, their perception of what autism is is a bit confused? I think there's a stereotype about what an autistic child looks like. What do you think a child that who, is? Yeah, a child who flaps his hands totally in a world of their own. Um, and I think that has changed dramatically um, over the past years. Because there's something called the autism spectrum. Right. Describe what that is, because that matters in this discussion, does it not? Absolutely. The spectrum is incredibly wide. There are children who are very mildly affected by autism and those who are very severely affected by autism. I think that stereotype looks at the children who were very effect uh, severely affected by autism. Um, we are now diagnosing children with much milder, milder symptoms. Um, and we also, um, so it, it, essentially what you talk about is the spectrum is there's a huge difference in the symptomatology of a child who may have the same diagnosis, which is autism spectrum disorder. And it's interesting, you talk about diagnosing autism. There is or is not a test for diagnosing autism? Actually, the diagnosis is very difficult because it's a clinical diagnosis. There is no test. There is no test. You, you don't no. take a child's blood and say, oh, we're going to take your blood, we're going to test this child's blood, and we're going to determine if this child had, has autism. No, that can't be done. Nope, nope. So, um, and, and that brings out an important point because, because it's a clinical diagnosis, I think it's very important to um, have someone evaluate a child who has a lot of experience with autism. I think somebody who has a, a huge um, knowledge of what it is, and um, so usually developmental pediatricians, psychiatrists, neurologists, um, there's a number of specialists who have expertise in that area and um, uh, often are referred by pediatricians, um, child study teams. But for parents watching right now, doctor, yeah, who may be concerned, A, at what point should a parent be thinking about, aware of this issue of autism, and B, what are they looking for? So they should be looking early, and so should their, their pediatrician. How early? Very early. So uh, making eye contact with the parent, reciprocal cooing. Eye contact? Eye contact. Why is that so important? Because that shows a connectedness um, to a person. And um, on autism, um, these children are not very well related, not related the way they're supposed to be. So if a child is having difficulty making eye contact, mm -hmm. that doesn't mean the child has autism. It means that potentially the child should be, since there's not a test. Right. It's just a red flag. A, red, a red flag. flag. And there is um, now the American Academy of Pediatrics um, has recommended, strongly recommended, that pediatricians do a specific autism screen at 18 months and 24 months of age. So. Um, on your regular checkups, um, the pediatricians really should be looking specifically for those kinds of red flags or symptoms. Let's, let's say that a child is diagnosed with some um, issue connected to autism on the autism spectrum, as we say. Mm -hmm. What kind of treatment are we talking about? And is this treatment about medicine? You know, some uh, uh, treatment connected to medicine and therapy, one or the other, what is it? It's therapy. Um, it's not medicine? No. It's not? Not at this point. Go there ahead. are some issues later on that can be treated with medicine, um, but at the beginning what it is, it's behavioral therapy. So essentially you want to encourage a child to make eye contact 
uh, if they make eye contact, let's say 10% of the time, your goal would be to have them make it 25% of the time. And you make baby steps until you get it to 100% of the time. So at the beginning, you'll request eye contact and your later goals would be for the child to initiate eye contact on their own. Huge change. And where does New Jersey rank in the country in terms uh -huh. of how we're doing with those, helping those who are dealing with autism, families? New Jersey has a great reputation in regards to their interventions. New Jersey, however, also has the highest prevalence of autism um, nationwide. Do we or do we just diagnose it better? Uh, that's a great question. I don't have the answers, I just have the questions. Yeah, well, I don't have the answers either, but... Um, but is it, that it? We, is it that we actually have more cases? I'm not being facetious. I mean, do we actually have more cases of autism, or mm -hmm. are we that much more aggressive and assertive in trying to identify situations where children have some issue connected with autism? Do we, do we really know that? No, we don't know that, but we do believe our record keeping is better, our evaluation system, right. the amount of uh, experts in the, the field. Uh, there are a huge amount of uh, people in New Jersey who are um, uh, excellent at uh, identifying early. Um, and our school systems and our early intervention programs are excellent. They've been good. And, and finally, for parents. Yeah. Do some parents resist? I think that or there, deny. I think there is an issue of denial in parents with anything. So um, some parents are ready to jump on it because they know that early identification leads to early treatment and great outcomes. Um, I think that um, with all populations, though, there are some people who um, are in denial, um, and that's why pediatricians really do need to screen regularly. Finally, long term, can we beat autism? Well, that's great. A new study has come out um, where children are actually coming off the spectrum. So there was a study done uh, recently where 9% of children uh, studied up till age 19 actually lost the, the diagnosis. So I think what's going to happen is as we're diagnosing milder and milder uh, children with um, symptomatology, um, I think we may see that uh, increase. We're also identifying early, treating early and intensively. So um, I'm very optimistic about... Huge progress. I think it's tremendous progress. There's a lot of research being done as well that is um, giving us a lot more insight and answers mm -hmm. um, as to what's going on. But a lot of work to do. Thank you, Doctor. We appreciate it. Oh, you're welcome. Stay with us. One on One will continue right after this. One on One with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating over 25 years of broadcast excellence. Funding for this edition of One on One with Steve Adubato has been provided by the New Jersey Education Association, Wells Fargo, activists in cooperation with the American Medicine Chess Challenge, Steve and Elaine Pozicki, United Water, MagnaCare, and by Johnson & Johnson. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area.